All right, so I want to show you an, actually a really interesting uh, demonstration today or a chemical, chemical reaction. And that is, uh, you know, you all know what happens if you leave your, you know, your car sitting out in the rain for long periods of time. Um, the metal will start to rust. The iron will start to oxidize. Well, we're going to do that same chemical reaction, except we're going to do it really, really fast. And what I've done is I've gotten a piece of steel wool, all right, that's got um, steel, and uh, steel has iron in it, uh, along with some other things. And uh, we're going to take that iron in that steel wool, and we're going to oxidize it uh, fairly rapidly. Uh, and we're going to do that using high temperatures. High temperatures or, uh, tend, to, tend to signify that we've given a lot of of energy to that particular substance, whatever it is, and we're going to apply a very high temperature to that steel wool, and we're going to cause the oxygen in the air to react with the iron that's in the steel wool, and that's going to produce iron oxide or, or rust, um, essentially. Now, normally a reaction would be very, very slow. We'd say the chemical kinetics of that particular reaction are not fast. Kinetics is a way of, of measuring how fast a chemical reaction occurs. So we'd say that reaction is actually very, very slow. And it's slow because it takes a lot of energy to get the reaction started. All right? So that we'd say there's a high activation energy for that re reaction to occur. So we're going to provide a lot of energy to the steel wool, and we're going to do that not in the traditional way that you would think. All right? Uh, the traditional way that you would think that we might do that would be to, to heat it up um, with like a flame. And you know, that's one way that you could, you could likely do this experiment is you could add a lot of heat. I could get my little blowtorch out and use it. But I'm actually going to use electrical energy to do that. I'm going to start passing a current through these really little strands of the steel that are in the steel wool. Um, and whenever you do that, when you start passing a current or starting to to cause electrons to flow through those really, really small wires. Well, the smaller the wire, the more resistance to the flow of those electrons that will, ex that will exist in that wire. And when the re resistance is high, the electrical resistance is high, it will cause that wire to heat up, all right? And heat up to, to, to some very, very high temperatures. Well, once that happens, all right, the reaction will start to occur because the temperature is so high, we're, so we're going to start to oxidize the iron in that wire. Now, the funny thing is, is we're going to add energy to this reaction to get it to start going, that activation energy that we're going to provide. And then the reaction itself is going to produce energy because it's what we're going to call an exothermic reaction. All right, we've talked about exothermic reactions before when we talked about elephant's toothpaste and and things like that, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide gives off heat. Well, this reaction, we're going to start it with the electrical energy, and then it's going to produce enough energy to sort of self-perpetuate itself. And as that heat starts flowing down the strand, it's going to start the reaction again. So it's going to perpetuate itself the whole way through all of the strands until all of the strands of that iron oxide, have been, or of that iron, of that steel wool and the iron in it have been converted to iron oxide. So it's really, really cool to watch. It's this, this interesting self-perpetuating reaction that occurs just by touching that steel wool with a 9-volt battery. All right, We don't want to do it for long. You don't ever really want to short out a battery for very long, but if we do it for short periods of time, we get those electrons. The electrons will heat up the wire. The wire will start reacting with the oxygen all right, to produce the, the iron oxide, and it'll perpetuate itself through the entire portion. Now, again, another one of those reactions that you probably shouldn't be doing on your own, in your backyard, or in your basement, like I'm doing right here. Um, I've done this a bunch of times. I actually have um, aluminum foil or aluminum trays all over so that any sparks or anything will be caught by the aluminum tray. But just in case, I do have my fire extinguisher here, all right, that I could get out and I could use if I need to. Um, I won't because I've taken safety precautions, but it's good to have it. So I'm going to move out from behind the table. And then I'm going to start that steel wool burning. 
So we're going to watch it once here. You're going to be kind of far away, so you're not going to see it very well. But then I'm going to turn off the lights and show it to you in a little bit better, more zoomed in fashion. Really, really looks super cool. So, combustion of steel wool. Now when I say that that steel wool is burning, it's burning at a very high temperature. You certainly wouldn't want to put your hand on it, okay? It dissipates and moves through that wire fairly quickly, but it's really, really hot. And we, we don't normally think of metals as burning, but you know, you get them to a high enough temperature, you get the metals to oxidize to form these oxides um, in a really, really cool fashion. So now I'm going to turn the lights off, put another piece of steel wool up there, turn the lights off, and let you see this in a much more grand or exciting fashion. Um, thanks for watching the video, and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, during the next video that I record.